Here's a picture of Archimedes. There's a famous story about Archimedes. The king of Syracuse had a goldsmith take some gold and manufacture a crown for him. And when the king got the crown back from the goldsmith, he suspected that the goldsmith had only used part of the gold in manufacturing the crown, and it had kept some of the gold for himself, and had replaced the, the gold with an inferior metal. So the crown still weighed the same. So the king, the king would, would weigh the crown to make sure that all the material was there, but he suspected that the gold had been mixed in with something else. Some of the gold had been taken out, and a less valuable metal had been mixed in with the crown in its place. And so he gave this task to Archimedes. He said, figure out if this crown is pure gold or not. And Archimedes thought about it for a while, and the answer came to him when he was getting in the bathtub. And as he climbed into the bathtub, the space that his body took up in the tub caused some water to overflow over the side of the tub. And he realized that materials will displace a certain amount of water. If they're placed into the water, they push the water aside. And he realized that some materials will displace more than others, depending on how much stuff is in a given amount of volume, depending on the density of the material. He realized that gold was very dense, so the same weight of gold would displace less water than a material that was less dense. So he realized a less dense metal, and all the other metals are less dense than gold, he realized if the, if the crown still has the same weight, but there's some inferior metal mixed in with it, then, then it will displace more water. And so he, by putting the crown in water and seeing how much water was displaced, he was able to prove that the crown was not pure gold. And the, the king was very pleased with this. Um, when Archimedes figured this out, upon getting in the tub and thinking about this and realizing the solution to the problem, he allegedly jumped out of the tub and ran through the streets of Syracuse yelling, Eureka! And that's a, the Greek word just meaning, I found it, I've got it. And so you picture Archimedes with no clothes on, just ecstatic that he's found the answer to this problem, just running around yelling, Eureka, Eureka. And today, to this day, the word Eureka is still associated with him. And people still say that when they discover something or they figure something out, you still hear that exclam exclamation, Eureka. It goes all the way back to Archimedes and the story of him and the crown. And Archimedes, in understanding how objects would displace water, he also figured out why some things float and some things sink. And we have today what's known as Archimedes' Principle. And I'll state this and write it down, and you can write it into your notes. Archimedes' Principle says this, Any object floating or submerged in a liquid... Any object floating or submerged... in a liquid is buoyed up and that's B U O Y E D is buoyed up by a force we call this the buoyant force is buoyed up by a force that is equal to the weight of the liquid it displaces buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid it displaces And that's Archimedes' principle. Any object floating or, floating or submerged in a liquid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid it displaces. And that explains why things float or why some things don't float. And we'll discuss this for a little bit in the, in the next, couple of, next couple of videos here. So why is this the case? Why is it that something experiences this buoyant force? Well, we can understand this if we draw a little picture. Here's the surface of the water, and let's imagine something underneath the surface here. So here's an object underwater. Remember that the pressure increases with depth. The pressure is greater at greater depth. I'll just make a note of that here. Pressure is greater at greater depth. Now remember what pressure is. Pressure is a force distributed across an area. 
So I'm going to draw some little arrows here to represent the force, and I'm going to spread them out across the surface. Well, at greater depth down here, the bottom edge of this object is at a greater depth, so the pressure is going to be greater down here, so there will be greater force. And along the vertical sides, the pressure will gradually increase as we go deeper. So something like that. And you can see that there's more force on the bottom where it's in deeper water than there is on the top where the water is more shallow. So the result is a net force upward and that's the buoyant force. The buoyant force arises from a different pressure on the top and the bottom of the object. And anything that is in the water or in any liquid, anything that is in a liquid is going to experience a larger force on the bottom where it's deeper than it is on the top. So anything floating or submerged in a liquid will experience this buoyant force. And Archimedes principle tells us that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid that it displaces.